I think that's the easiest way. Sophie, you can go on. Okay, this was a uh, strange, but okay. Uh, so selective uh, dry cow therapy, yes, we can. Just to repeat uh, and to be clear, selective dry cow therapy really means we will select cows that can be dried off or that should be dried off with antibiotics. So cows with an intramammary infection, they do require antibiotics. Cows that are not infected are dry off, they do not require antibiotics. This is quite obvious. This is also easy to understand. If there is no infection, we don't need antibiotics. So the most important reason for switching to selective dry cow therapy is really lowering the use of antibiotics. And this is a figure from Belgium or the Flemish part of Belgium, but you can find that also in other countries. If they quantify the use of antibiotics on dairy farms, then they see that most antibiotics are used for the treatment here or the prevention of antibiotics. So mastitis tubes, or here, for example, dry cow tubes. And you see that 65% of those antibiotics are used for the treatment of or prevention of uh, mastitis. So if we can reduce the use of dry cow injectors or dry cow tubes, because we start selecting cows and only those cows that need antibiotics are treated with antibiotics, we will definitely be successful and have a reduction in antimicrobial use. Now, uh, how to select uh, those cows, how to apply? Well, you can take samples, uh, milk samples for bacteriological culturing. For example, a couple of days before you're planning to dry off cows, you take a milk, samples, uh, the milk sample at the quarter level or at the cow level, and you determine whether or not the cow is infected. So that's really a direct method. You will look for mastitis causing pathogens in milk samples. Of course, that that is quite uh, that costs quite some efforts from from your side. Also, more expensive on farms that participate already in milk recording in the DHIA recording. So every four to six weeks, the cell count is determined. You don't need that bacteriological culturing. You can just go for individual somatic cell count records. So the cell count is an indicator for the presence of bacteria in a milk sample. So we can use that cell count to distinguish infected from non-infected cows. And that is, of course, much easier. Of course, it's an indirect method, and that means that we will need to choose a threshold. Which cow is infected and which cow is not infected? If we have a cow with, for example, 50,000 cells per mil, is that cow then infected? And does she require antibiotics or is she not infected? And does she not require antibiotics at dry off? Or do we use a threshold of 100,000 cells per mil or a threshold of 150,000 cells per mil? Or maybe even a threshold of 400,000 cells per mil? So if we use bacteriological culturing, it's easy. Positive is antibiotics, negative is no antibiotics. If we use the cell count, which is much easier to use, but then we need to make a selection. Then we need to make a decision which cow is infected and which one is not, because it's an indirect method. Now, the general rules are very simple. The higher the threshold, the higher the reduction in the use of antibiotics. If you use, for example, a cell count threshold of 400,000 cells per mil, then only the cows with a cell count above 400,000 cells per mil will receive antibiotics. All other animals with a cell count below 400,000 cells per mil will not receive antibiotics. And of course, if you use a cell count of 400,000 cells per mil, much more cows will be dried off without antibiotics compared to farms that use a cell count of 200,000 cells per mil. So the lower the threshold, the lower the reduction in the use of antibiotics. If, of course, if you use 400,000 cells, for example, Yes, you might have a cow with a cell count of 300,000 cells per mil. She will not get antibiotics, but she might be infected. So you take a bit a higher risk than farms 
that use, for example, a threshold of 200,000 cells per ml. And that's the balance that we need to try to find. And that balance might be different on every single farm, depending on the situation today. Just to inspire you, some uh, examples from countries. So, for example, in the United States, uh, there they use the 200,000 cells per ml at all test days. So that means that a cow that has a cell count of 250,000 cells per ml, only one milk recording over her whole lactation, she will be dried off with antibiotics. And they also take into account clinical mastitis. So cows that had three or four cases or more cases during lactation will be dried off with antibiotics. In the Netherlands, for example, they use two thresholds, one for first lactating animals, 150,000 cells per ml, one for older cows, and they only use the last testing. So a heifer, a first lactating animal with a cell count of 160,000 cells per ml at the last milk recording before dry off will be dried off with antibiotics. A heifer with a cell count of 140,000 cells per ml will not receive antibiotics. And as you can see, for the older cows, they use a much lower threshold and there they use the 50,000 cells per ml. In New Zealand, they also work with two thresholds, but again, over all test days. So the complete lactation, the whole lactation is taken into account. And animals that had at least one case of clinical mastitis in lactation will immediately and will always be dried off with antibiotics. So you see, even among countries, regions, there is no consensus. They use different uh, thresholds. Just to give you an example, I will show you some examples of two farms that decided to switch to selective dry cow therapy, both for their own reasons. And in this farm, they have 215 lactating cows and an average herd milk somatic cell count of 303,000 cells per ml. So then the question is, if we have cows that need to be dried off, will we use antibiotics or will we not use antibiotics? So here we have a first cow in fourth lactation. She had no clinical mastitis during lactation. Milk production at dry off was 17.7 kilograms per day. And we have here the cell counts before dry off. So as you can see in May, that was quite good, 155,000 uh, cells per mil. But then you can see in June, August and September, the cell count was above 200,000 cells per mil. Well, on this farm, they have decided to treat the animal with antibiotics at dry off. So they used the long-acting antimicrobials plus then an internal teat sealant, so the silicone, to, as a barrier uh, that they put in the teat canal. The animal calved in November 2023, and then we can have a look at the cell counts after calving. So here we ended with a cell count of 1,532,000 cells per ml. Then the cow was dried off. She calved in November, and in December we had again a cell count, the first one after calving. And as you see, the cow is non-infected based on her cell counts. So the treatment during the dry period was successful. Of course, on your farms, we do never have a control group. We never know what would have happened if, for example, this cow would not have received antibiotics. So that, that makes it a bit difficult on farms in reality, in practice, because you never know what would have, ha what would have happened if you would have taken another decision. So the same farm, we have a cow with a second lactation, no clinical mastitis in lactation, milk production at dry off to uh, 12.5 kilograms per day. Previous lactation, as you can see, very low cell counts just before dry off in the last four months before dry off, all went well. Then we have a cow that calved here in December. This cow was also treated with antibiotics and an internal teeth sealant. So they decided, yes, most probably based on the cell counts, this cow is infected. We don't want to take the risk, so we will use antibiotics. And as you can see, even with antibiotics, 
the cell count was high after calving. So even with antibiotics, with an internal teeth sealant, this cow most probably uh, experienced, most probably developed a new infection over dry period or just after calving, and that resulted in an increased somatic cell count. And then we have a last example on this slide. This is a first lactating animal, no clinical mastitis, milk production had dry off 15.2 kilograms per day. The cell counts were very, very low. So the cell counts before dry off, 19,000, 19,000, 15,000, 34,000. So actually an animal that is most probably not infected at dry off. The animal calved. This is an animal that they considered to be non-infected at dry off based on the cell counts, very low cell counts. So they decided not to use antibiotics, only an internal teeth serum, so only the silicone. And what happened, indeed, the cow or the animal calved very well, and the cell counts here after calving, December, January, February, or very low. This, so this animal is not infected. So you can see that um, you're never sure whatever decision that you take. I just want to show you the protocol that they used on this farm, and it's quite a heavy protocol. Um, in that way, it's based on research that we have done in our own uh, team at Kent University. And in that research, we make it, we only select uh, farms with already cell count below 250,000 cells per mil. And that's an indication that it are already farms with a better other health. Then we divide them in farms with a cell count below 157,000 cells per mil, uh, higher than and then lower than 157,000 cells per mil. So again, a distinction is made between the farms with a very good other health and the farms with a good other health, but not very good. And there is still a distinction among those farms. The farm we were looking at was in this group had a cell count of 203,000 cells per mil, so below 250, but above 157. And we also worked with two thresholds in this study, one for first lactating animals and one for older cows. We took the three last cell counts into account, and for first lactating animals and for older cows, if it was a farm with a cell count above 150,000 cells per mil, the cell count of 50,000 was used. As you can see on the farms with a bit of better other health, two different uh, thresholds were used for first lactating and older cows, and the threshold was also higher, 150,000 and 100,000. But the farm we discussed was here, so that means that only animals with cell count less than 50,000 cells per mil in the last three milking recordings were considered to be non-infected and did not receive antibiotics. So you have seen it was only a limited number of animals that could be dried off without antibiotics because the threshold was very strict. Now, what to expect? Well, here you can see the results of the farms that were included in that study. So here we have the category of farms with a cell count below 157,000 cells per mil. Here we have the farms with a cell count above 157,000 cells per mil. So we call them high, but still fine, eh? but higher compared to the other ones. And here, this class of farms that started with a cell count below 157,000 and increased over the study to above 157,000 cells per mil. Now, what you can see is that the lower the cell count on the farm, the more cows that can be dried off without antibiotics. So the blue columns is the percentage of cows that were dried off without antibiotics on the farms. If we are here in this category, then we also have that very, very strict threshold of 50,000 cells per mil. So you see it's a minimum of animals that can be dried off without antibiotics if we stick to the threshold of 50,000 cells per mil. And that's again the balance. Is it more risk that you like to take or is it focusing on the reduction in antimicrobial use? On these farms, less antibiotics will be used. On these farms, more antibiotics will be used. 
Now, another farm, I have two examples just to show you. This is a farm that also decided to shift to selective dry cow therapy in Belgium. So 195 cows, 204,000 cells per ml if we talk about the herd milk somatic cell count and an average percentage of clinical mastitis of 2% per month. So here we have a cow in third lactation, no clinical mastitis in lactation, milk production at dry off 18.3 kilograms per day. The cell counts in previous lactation, so the last four months before dry off, as you can see, very low. Here in June, 193,000 cells per mil, but that's still below 200,000, so it's still uh, considered to be low. The animal calved then in September. The animal was dried off without antibiotics on this farm. So you see that a completely other decision is taken. On the other farm, they would have used antibiotics. On this farm, they did not use antibiotics, but they protected the cow against new infections with the silicone, with the internal teat sealant. And as you can see, all went well. The animal calved and the cell counts are very low after calving. So this is a success story. If we look at this animal, fifth lactation, she had clinical mastitis at 35 days in lactation. So the previous lactation, in her previous lactation, just after calving, she developed clinical mastitis. Milk production, 12.7 kilograms per day. Here you can see her cell counts, normally below 200,000 cells per mil. In June, a little bit higher, 245,000 cells per mil. What will we do with this cow? Well, here they decided to dry off the cow with long-acting antimicrobials and an internal teat sealant. And as you can see, she started her lactation again with a slightly higher cell count. But in December then, without any treatment, she had a cell count of 181,000 cells per mil. So this farm used a totally different protocol. It's actually the protocol that is proposed in Belgium nowadays by AMCRA. Um, there we have two selection levels. We have one selection level at the herd, uh, where they say, OK, only farms with a cell count, bulk milk somatic cell count, below 250,000 cells per mil in the last four of the, uh, in the, at least four of the last six months, are eligible to switch to selective dry cow therapy, no history of streptococcus ahalaxi, and no specific risk periods. For example, that they are switching from a traditional conventional milking system to a robot milking system, that's not the best time to shift to selective dry cow therapy. If those farms do not meet the conditions, one of the three conditions, then they should not switch to selective dry cow therapy. Then they should first try to improve other health together with the herd veterinarian, and if they improved other health, then they can switch to selective dry cow therapy. In the meantime, they keep on drying off all cows with antibiotics. If they meet the conditions here at the herd level, then this farm is ready to switch to selective dry cow therapy, and then they use the 200,000 cells per ml level at the last three milk recordings. And no clinical mastitis in those last three months before dry off. So cell count below 200,000 cells per ml and no clinical mastitis. If the cows have a cell count below 200,000 cells per ml at the last three milk recordings before dry off, then they do not need antibiotics. They are considered to be non-infected and they only use a teat sealant. If one of the three milk recordings the cell count is higher than 200,000 cells per mil, then they are considered to be infected and they get antibiotics. Now, of course, Europe says it is mandatory to shift to selective dry cow therapy. So actually, this level 
will not be accepted by Europe. Whether you have a good other health or a bad other health, we need to shift to selective drug therapy. We cannot treat animals that are not infected. We cannot treat them with antibiotics. So it means that the only thing you can do on your farm is together with the veterinarian decide what is now the most appropriate threshold to use on my farm. And that depends on the risks that are nowadays uh, present. So what to expect if we use the 200,000 cells per mil at the last three test days? Well, then we know that 90% of the cows that will not receive antibiotics are truly not infected. So the risk is very limited. But of course, these are only farms that have already good other health. So not farms with a cell count of 300 or 350,000 cells per mil. Only farms with a good other health if we then use the 200,000 cells per mil threshold, we see that it's quite okay. And we also have to realize that still quite some animals that are not infected will still receive antibiotics. So if you use 200,000 cells per mil, well, actually only 30% of the animals that will receive antibiotics will be truly infected. So we still use quite a lot of antibiotics in animals that are not infected. But we need to start somewhere and we try to limit the risks as much as possible for you as producer. Can we switch to selective drag out therapy without negative consequences? Yes, it is possible. But we need to take into account some considerations. We need to understand that the long-acting antibiotics we use today have two effects. They will help to cure the animals that are infected today. If they are infected that dry off and we use the antibiotics, then they have a high chance to cure during dry period. This will not change. If we switch to selective dry cow therapy, this remains the same. Infected animals still receive antibiotics. But of course, long-acting antibiotics also cure new infections. So maybe a cow is today not infected at dry off, but she develops an infection during dry period. Well, if she was treated with long-acting antibiotics, those antibiotics will help her to cure. And of course, this will change if we switch to selective dry cow therapy. Because an animal that is not infected at dry off will not receive antibiotics. So if she develops an infection during dry period, she will need to do it with her own immunity. Because there are no antibiotics in the other to help her. So cure, that will not change. But the cure of new infections, that's something that might change. And if we are not careful, it might result in an increase in new infections over dry periods because the new infections will not be treated with antibiotics at that moment. So that's why we do have some precautions and prerequisites. Shifting to selective dry cow therapy is not difficult. We can do it tomorrow. Shifting to selective dry cow therapy without negative consequences is also possible. But on some farms, we still do have some work in order to decrease the risk for new infections. If you have now already a new infection rate of 20% over dry period, this will not improve if you stop using antibiotics. This will get worse. So we have to reduce the new infections over dry period. So as I mentioned, herd level, Europe is not taking that into account. All farms need to shift to selective dry cow therapy. It is already mandatory since the 28th of January 2022. So we do not have much more time to decide. We need to shift to selective dry cow therapy. What can we do to limit the risks at the herd level is to use another threshold depending on the other health status. On farms that have nowadays still issues with other health, with a high cell count, with more clinical mastitis, we can choose to use, for example, a threshold of 50,000 cells per mil. While on farms with already good other health, we can say we use a threshold of 200,000 cells per mil. 
Secondly, have a look at your management, especially also your dry cam management. So we use that for the tool use scan. We evaluate all elements of other health management, mastitis management on a farm. And we try to strive for a score of at least 80% for every element. So the green is the objective. The pink is the score obtained here on this farm. So if it's a bit too low, if the dry cow management is yet not perfect, then this needs to be improved before shifting to selective dry cow therapy, or at least before using a threshold of, for example, 200,000 cells per mil. So hygiene is important. Teeth disinfection while or when just before applying the tubes. Using a teeth sealer is important. Having a milk production below 15 kilograms in the last 24 hours is important and maybe protecting the animals against infections with vaccination. But that's of course specific. That depends on what type of bacteria is causing issues on your farm. Correctly applying internal teeth sealant is important. So in the Netherlands, they have done a study. They had quarters that were not protect with it, protected with an internal teeth sealant. And they have seen, yes, if we shift to selective dry cow therapy, we have a reduction in antimicrobial use. 85% less antibiotics. But they have also seen that in the quarters that were not protected with an internal teeth sealant, that they had almost that they had two times more chance for clinical mastitis in the first two weeks after calving, and two times more chance for a high cell count. So if no antibiotics are used, a teeth sealant need to be applied. Otherwise, you will have problems. And then what is also important to know it just to 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 finalize is that selective dry cow therapy is economically more beneficial than blanket dry cow therapy but this is especially true on farms that have already a good other health today so if you want to save money if you want to increase your profits on a farm, then improve other health. And then the impact of shifting to selective dry cow therapy will not, will not be there. Instead, it will be more beneficial to shift to selective dry cow therapy than to use antibiotics in all cows. And on farms that were doubting a bit, yes, but it will have negative effects if I cannot use long-acting antibiotics in all my animals, be aware that you lose already a lot of money today if your other health is not good. So on farms with a poor other health, we do see that blanket dry cow therapy is not the solution. They lose money as well. So try to have a good other health, improve other health that will already reduce the use of antibiotics on your farm. And if you switch to selective dry cow therapy, it will also reduce the risks that you take. That's the most optimal situation. So on farms with a poor other health that complain that they have issues with other health after switching to selective dry cow therapy, this is, does not make sense because be they have a poor other health, so they lose already a lot of money today. So selective dry cow therapy is the new way of drying off cows. There is no way back. It is already mandatory since 28th of January 2022. That's more than two years. Selective dry cow therapy will always reduce or will always result in a reduction in the use of antibiotics on a dairy farm. It can be applied without negative consequences for future cows' performances, but then it is important that the other health at the herd level is at a good level, so at least the cell count below 250,000 cells per mil, that the dry cow management is optimal, and always use an internal or, if you don't like internal teeth sealants, an external teeth sealant in cows that do not get antibiotics, because we want to protect them against new infections. They don't need antibiotics because they are not infected, 
but we need to protect them against new infections. So thank you very much, and I'm open for questions now, or you can also ask them afterwards via WhatsApp or uh, email. So thank you very much, Sophie. Um, there were a few questions in the chat. Um, I can read them, or do you see them? Yes, I can see them, yes. The first one was from Marita. How many cows should be regularly tested for with pathogens? I mean, the strategy you mentioned uh, to, um, instead of the cell count, who is very easier to do, uh, if I don't um, want uh, to have the risk of this 30% of cows or perhaps uh, new infected or something like this, um, uh, and I want to um, be, be sure of the, um, of the infection of my herd, um, yeah. in, in which, uh, in which uh, uh, procedure I have to do that to be, to be sure about the, the other health <laughs> Of, yeah, of yeah. my head. Yeah, so then uh, you will need to take uh, milk samples eh, of, uh, yeah, prefer if you do standard bacteriological culturing, then it's even milk samples at the quarter level. So every cow that you will dry off, uh, for example, you dry off on Thursday, while on Monday you say, I will take samples of these cows, and then you will have the results. So then you do it for every individual cow and even quarter, because if you take a mixed sample from four quarters, you get quite some dilution and false negative results. Now, be aware the risks. It's, a, it, it's never a black and white story. It's not because an infected cow does not get antibiotics that 100% for sure she will not cure. Eh? That's not true either. It, with antibiotics, we increase the chance that she will cure, but it's not because she doesn't get antibiotics that she will not cure. She's luckily cows still have an immunity. And be aware as well, even with bacteriological culturing, yeah, we do, there is no method that is 100% uh, for sure. So you have false negative results, false positive. So we have done a study with culturing compared to the cell count. It was in the same study. And actually the benefit of doing culturing is quite limited compared to the regular cell counting. Um, and, and don't be, in my opinion, is uh, now the quantity of cows that can be dried off without antibiotics is less important than the quality. So to start, I prefer to not take a lot of risks, maybe to start with a cell count threshold of 50,000 cells per mil, but every cow that is dried off without antibiotics, that she has no problems afterwards. And then you get more... Uh, you become more enthusiasm, you get a bit of uh, a feeling what is going on, you get more confidence, and then you can see uh, how to further increase the number of cows that do not need antibiotics. Yeah, but if you do culturing or CMT testing, some people do that as well. So first that quarter level CMT testing and then do culturing of those quarters with a high cell count. That's uh, another method. Yeah. OK, thanks. Other questions? Yeah, Marita has had some more. Okay. Uh, I, so, yeah. I write all my questions in the chat uh, so I don't forget what I wanted. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I see a question on digital solution. Uh, yeah. I'm quite sure that uh, we have a software tool because those two farms uh, make use of it uh, where you can even adapt the thresholds you like to use and it indicates, okay, this cow requires antibiotics, this cow does not require antibiotic based on the decision you're taking. Do you use 50,000 or 100,000? But uh, yeah, I'm quite sure uh, that uh, that's yeah, that the digital solutions are there. If you want more information about our solution, then uh, yeah, I can send it uh, easily, and then you can see how it uh, how it works. Yeah. 
And it's also good if you use digital solutions that it's not only helping you to select the cows, but it helps you also to determine a bit the risks at farm level and what is the new infection rate today. If you have now already 25% new infections over dry period, yeah, then, then first something needs to happen to reduce that percentage because this will not reduce or not get better without antibiotics. And digital solutions also help you to evaluate the new strategy, yeah? like we have done with the example cows. Okay, what happened now? So make sure that you get a full picture and uh, that helps you to, to get confidence and to, to continue. I see another one. Do you think it makes sense to set the level of cell count for the use of antibiotics at the same level as the dairy factory set for the first quality milk? And then first quality milk is 200,000 cells per mil? Or? That depends on the dairy factory. Um, um, in Luxembourg, we have uh, four different uh, dairy factories uh, who get the milk from, from the farmers. and um, one of them, um, Arla, um, uh, have uh, for the first quality milk uh, uh, 200,000 200, and uh, another dairy factory is uh, 250,000. Um, so, um, and I, I heard that Arla uh, was in discussion to reduce uh, the cell count for the first quality to 150,000. So, um, in order uh, to the dairy factory where I um, uh, sell my milk, I, I thought if it is uh, um, interesting and good to adapt my level of uh, of cell count um, to to make the decision to to take antibiotics or not uh, in order to the the first quality level of the dairy factory well if if the 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 first uh, quality milk um, is set by 250000 i understood uh, now after your uh, um, ex um, explanation no? um, after all that you said that that is too high uh, to work yeah. with it, but um, but the well, others, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I would not uh, base it on uh, the level that is used for milk quality premiums. Um, we have seen that, and I see also the next question: What is good other health? We are not the only ones that have already used the two hundred fifty thousand level at least six months, so not just one time below 250,000, but a sustainable, rather good other health. Um, we have seen that on those farms that you can use, for example, 200,000 cells per mil. Yes, so that, that works pretty well. The reason is simple. If you have already good other health, the infection pressure is lower. You just have less bacteria to which the cows are exposed to. So you have a low risk that cows will be infected with a dangerous mastitis pathogen. Um, of course, if, and that's how it looks like now in Europe, if that is not possible to say, okay, we only do it on farms with already a good other health, yeah, then I would say decrease your threshold. And on farms that are above 250,000, I would definitely not use the 200,000 cell count threshold, but then, for example, 100,000 cell count threshold, or even 50,000 to start with, just not to take risks. And that's actually what they have done in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, they have said, OK, we take the decision, we switch to selective dry cow therapy. There is no discussion. Every farm needs to apply selective dry cow therapy. So they were also, and there are still farms in the Netherlands with a less good other health, but they need to apply selective dry cow therapy. But what do you see? They have put the threshold, especially for older cows, very low. And that's just to take into account, okay, on farms with a bad or a less good other health today, yeah, what is the percentage of adult cows 
with a cell count below 50,000 cells per mil just before the write off. That's a minimum. So, and actually, they take the decision. They don't say we select farms, but they say, okay, on farms with a poor other health, it's a minimum of cows that will not get antibiotics. So it's a it's an indirect way to take into account the other health uh, status. Yes, what I would also recommend uh, to bulk milk somatic cell count is one parameter, but secondly, to have a look at the new infection rate over the dry periods. That's for me also a very important uh, indicator because. We use antibiotics and I, I get yeah, three, four hundred uh, recordings every month of different uh, farms. So I see a lot of farms that have now already 20 percent or 15 percent new infections over dry period. But you have to take into account that this is only a part that we see after calving because the other part was there in dry period, but was eliminated by the antibiotics. So if we don't have the antibiotics, it will become maybe 30 percent that we will see. So that's for me also an important uh, indicator. Yeah. It's also an answer of the last question I put into the chat. Yeah. Um, what do you think are a, uh, a good other health? Because the word good, that is yeah. like chewing gum. <laughs> yeah. So cell count and, below 250,000, yeah. if clinical mastitis records are available, then I would also say uh, uh, at least less than 3% clinical mastitis per month, and if possible, even less than 2%. And then you have the infection rate over dry period, um, preferably lower than 10%. So if 10 cows were dried off with a low cell count and in the condition that we still use antibiotics in all cows, they had a low cell count at the last measurement before dry off. Well, maximum one of them should have a high cell count at the first recording after calving. That's the 10 percent. So we look at the animals with a low cell count that were not infected at dry off and we evaluate them and see what happened after calving. I, I guess I understand that the managing of the data of the cows, cell count and uh, new infection, all that will, will be very, very important as management tool to have uh, a good success story in um, just uh, selective uh, try, uh, try therapy. Um, yeah. And yeah. More. yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit like in all all the in all the management for, with dairy cows to to have data and to work with them and to be uh, aware of of all the things uh, and in herds that will be bigger and bigger it uh, it will be very important also to to uh, to save more money for the farm if i work very precision yeah. In this point, yes. Yeah, and that's, thank you so much for your yeah. uh, uh, for your uh, how do you call that in English? Ex explanation Ex presentation. Yes, for yeah. your yes yeah. for your presentation yeah. and explanation. Very very interesting. Very practically and um, yes, um, I know um, how that uh, that it is the way overall to to work with data to handle data and to to be aware of all the things that uh, the cows told to me what's what's yeah. wrong and what's going on. Yeah, because I'm quite sure in now I see that it's not always easy for farms, but not for the advisors. That's uh, either to, to make the decision I shift to selective dry cow therapy, because at the short term, it's the reduction in antibiotics, and that's the most important for the society, for the governments, uh, and so on. So that's really the main aim and objective. We lower the use of antibiotics, but just because people will be obliged, will be forced to look at the data, to look at the management to be successful, I'm quite convinced that in the end, it will be 
very, very beneficial for every dairy farm because I do see nowadays that they struggle with other health, with antibiotics. So, so that means that there is still a lot of room for improvement. Yeah. I agree totally. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Oh, there are some other, quest other questions. If not, then yeah, I would thank Sophie for the interesting presentation. Thank you and so much. Sorry? I said thank you so much. Was oh, yes, it was pleasure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and still have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.